All right, everybody, it's time to get started. Uh, Hockeyist, welcome in. Um, I just also realized that um, I may have to make some quick edits real quick. Uh, let's see. Give me a moment. And by quick edits, I mean, I think I forgot to change a few things on my settings. Let's see, if I go to just chatting, uh, that's what I thought. Okay, here. There we go. Okay, there I am. Alright, so, um, first things first, especially for those of you that are just coming in, and I'm, not, I'm probably going to do this, uh, my normal spiel like this at the beginning of every lesson, but for those of you that are interested in joining in on these Japanese lessons, um, I do strongly recommend you join the Discord, and I'm going to exclamation point Discord if you're not in there already. And in order to enter, just make sure you agree to the rules, or I, I only have like five simple rules at this moment. Uh, and then go to Role Selector here. And Role Selector, if you want to access the Japanese lessons, just react with Jack Sip. I'm at the point where I'm thinking maybe I should just make this default so you guys don't have to worry about this. Um, anyway, the Japanese lessons are here. Currently, we are now on the Japanese 2 resources. Uh, if you missed all the Japanese 1 lessons and would like to go back to them, if you click on the Japanese 1 resources, you'll find all the notes we took for chapters 1 through 6. Uh, as well as the YouTube playlist here. Let me put this here. The YouTube playlist um, with all the previous lessons. That includes lessons one, or sessions one, all the way up to 28. Uh, it's all there. Um, these are about like an hour. Some of them are an hour and a half long. They are pretty long lessons, so I would take your time with it. Uh, I'm not trying to dissuade people to not stick around. It's just that you may be, you may get a little lost every now and then, but you're still welcome to stay and like try to learn a few things. Um, I will be giving plenty of sentence examples and vocabulary for you to use with today's lesson. Um, but yeah, all that is there. For today's lesson, we're going to go to the Japanese two resources that you can find here. And I haven't made the YouTube channel yet, and I will soon, because um, I still have to clip the first lesson since I was playing um, Wildermyth before it. Let me make sure, like, okay, my audio is working, and that you can, you can hear the music in the background as well. All right, so if I click here, the chapter seven, uh, these are all Google Documents that you can find if you access the Discord as well. And they're all here and available for you too. I'm making some minor changes to make things a lot easier to uh, browse around and explore. So I'm gonna see if I can like try to make it more viewer friendly because some of the notes from before were like, yeah, they're okay. All right, so uh, last week, and I meant to, I'm trying to do at least, and the keyword here is at least, two lessons of Japanese a week. Um, I got too carried away making curry last week, and I thought it would cook faster, but it didn't. So I apologize for last week. <laughs> I, re I really wanted to have nice, delicious, homemade curry, so I apologize. I, I mean, I apologize and I don't apologize at the same time. <clears throat> ah, okay. Let's see. There we go. All right, so last uh, last week on session one, we talked about vocabulary, and I'm going to briefly go over the vocabulary, specifically um, the vocabulary for the the, uh, the verbs. So I'm going to skip ahead from some of these, because I actually like how this one included pictures. Now, for those of you that are not comfortable with hiragana or katakana yet, um, I, I, I still recommend you try to guess these words. You may need to, like... Hold on, let me go to flashcards real quick. You may need to... Gosh darn this stuff. Sorry, not sorry. Like, click on the word. Yokatara. Oh, that's right, this one had the different voice. Yokatara. Uh, you may have to click on the words uh, themselves so that you can hear how to read them because it's not in Romanji. In fact, uh, most of the vocabulary cards that you'll see later on will only be in Hiragana Katakana because at this point, if like if I was doing this at the at an actual school or at an actual college, um, there would no longer be Romanji at this point. And it's kind of funny because like my, I, I, if I recall, my Japanese one students were always like, oh my god, the Hiragana is so difficult. 
It's so stupid. Why do we need this? And then they get the Japanese too. And then they start picking on the Japanese one because they're like, oh my God, the hiragana is so easy. Why don't you know it yet, you stupid scrub? And I'm just like, you guys are so hypocritical kind of thing. <laughs> um, but for today, Essanonics, welcome in. Like, uh, konbanwa sensei, konbanwa senonik-san. Uh, chill right, kunti, welcome. Sorry, not sorry is right. <laughs> All right, so what I said I would do, I want to go over the verbs specifically because we will need the verbs for today's lesson. Now, all these extra words we are going to use, but some of these you may know already, like ane or ane san for sister, young imoto, apato, uta, oji san, ototo, omi san, otoko no hito, uh, oni, one, older sister, one san. Wait, that was here already. Oba san, onna no hito, kaisha, and so forth. But like I said, I want to focus mostly on the grammar, not the grammar, the verbs for today. Uh, so, for example, here we go, like to sing, it's gonna be utau, utau, this is an u verb, utau, uh, to put on like a hat, kaburu, kaburu, uh, to know, shiru, this is different from to understand, to know something is a little different from to understand, next up puzzle, welcome in, so shiru, Shiru. I just realized you guys can't really see this. Here, let me. There we go. Okay. Uh, I do not know. Taking shiru, you'd be like shirimasen. However, if you do know something, you'd be shiteimasu. And I'll be going over that a little bit today. Uh, wow, I forgot a lot of stuff when I was last in formal Japanese class thing 10 years ago. That That is a long time. That's about the same for me, but since I've been teaching elementary Japanese so so much, I retained most of this stuff. It's just when we get to the more advanced stuff, I I I, I start to get a little, I start to have difficulty. Um, so shiri masen for I do not know. This is, uh, remember wakari masen is like I don't understand. Where where shiri masen is I don't know. There's a difference. Like if someone said what do you want for dinner and you said wakari masen, that 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 would be like. What do you not understand from that question? Or as if you said, shirimasen, like, I don't know what I want for dinner. Um, oh, here it is. I know. Shiteimasu. Uh, to live. Sumu. Uh, to put on items below your waist. This is haku. And I, this, these are ones that I need to remember. Haku. Uh, to gain weight. Futoru. But to be on the heavy side. Futoteimasu. Again, this is something we'll discuss today. To put on glasses. Megane o kakeru. Megane o kakeru. To put on clothes above your waist. Kiru. Um, like the jacket. I kiru my jacket. You, like... Uh, like... Ikiteimasu? Um... That's a different to live. And that, in fact, I don't like how this one says to live. In parentheses, it should be like to live at a, at a location. Like, ikiru is, is literally the... Is literally living. Whereas sumu is where the location that you live in. Like... I could say uh, I'm alive with ikdemas, but I would say like California ni sundemas. I would say I live in California kind of thing. Uh, to put on clothes, kiru. Um, another way to know this, uh, kiru, to put on clothes above your waist. Think of like kimono. You put a kimono on top uh, over, your over your chest. Uh, to work for, stomeru. And this is one word that uh, Kitsuneko was using uh, using a few weeks ago. Uh, Kitsuneko-san was talking about, like, uh, I think you could, they were talking about jobs. Uh, stomeru means to work for, like to work for a company. Let me double check because I think this uses particle ni. Like, you have to. Uh, stome, stome, stomeru. Where there is also hataraku, which, means, which also means to work. This is a ru verb. Yes, it is ni. You use particle ni. So if you say the company name, then ni stomeru. Like Target, ni stometemas. Starbucks, ni stometemas. I work at these places. Uh, to lose weight, yaseru. To be thin. Oh man, they added bones, like bone structures to this. Uh, yasteimas. To get married, kekkonsuru. Kekkonsuru. Yeah, I was looking through my book. <laughs> kekkonsuru. Um, those are the verbs for this chapter, and I will be putting them in our notes again later on, too. So, first things first, um, now that we're on session two, I'm actually gonna- here, let's make it- insert a table. 
things. I like my, my stuff to be nice and hyper organized and neat because I am a control freak in that way. Um, green. Uh, last, when we were doing Japanese one, or yeah, Japanese one, I was using blue. But now we're in Japanese two for our beginning intermediate students. We're gonna use green. So this is gonna be session two. Chapter 7. And th today's focus is Teiru. Uh, first of all, let's see what let's see what we remember. Uh Kyowa Nanichi Nanyobi Nangatsu Deska. What is today's date? Kyowa Nanga uh Nan Nanen Nangatsu Nani Nichi Nanyobi Deska? Man, even I don't know this. I, I actually had to look at my calendar because I, I because it's summer vacation. Uh, <laughs> I don't really pay attention to the date. So, today is what year? What day? What day? What day? What day? What that is correct. So, today is what day? I'm using the new. Who knows? Um, these are the. I'm writing everything like this in kanji because we have already learned these kanji in the previous lessons. Uh, however, like I said to, the, to everyone else, um, I would write this in romanji. So for those of you that, uh, Nisan, that still don't know your hiragana, katakana, or even the new, the first kanji that well, you can still join in with this. Nisan, uh, nen. Rokugatsu. And then it's Yobi. Why is it bolded? I don't want this bolded. Everything it, this shouldn't be bolded. There we go. And today we're going to be focusing on grammar point Teiru. Now Teiru is kind of how do I say this? This can be a little complicated. In fact, I'm gonna open something up because um there are, there are many ways that we are going to be using teiru, and one of them is known as the present progressive in English. Uh, but present progressive is not the only way that we're going to be using this. So here, give me one moment. And I'm going to see if I can open up my text real quick. Is this a yes? What do you want? I need more books to read, guys. I see the table of contents, but for some reason, the cloud reader doesn't allow me to skip ahead, and I'm a, I, I, I kind of hate that. Those are adjectives. Wow, we've done so much, guys. I'm so I'm really surprised how much we've done in this lesson. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, so like I said, there are going to be, there are many ways that we're going to be using Teiru. Let me keep this open right here, just in case. Yes, uh, the 2020 is in a different font. The reason is because I used it in, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Times Roman or whatever, Calibri or Arial. And then when I went to here to write it in Japanese, I actually stuck to the Japanese font instead. Um, you may have noticed that I also wrote these using um, Arabic numerals instead, and that's because when read left to right, even in Japan, they will use the Arabic numerals. Uh, however, if written in traditional, up to down, right to left, they will use the Roman, uh, the uh, kanji for the numbers instead. All right, so let's see. I'm, I'm just making sure that you guys see. All right, so Teiru. And I'm going to put the disclaimer, because like I may... <laughs> Like I said, I may need to I may need to split this into two different lessons, but I'm hoping I can get through both of them correctly uh, today. 
So in order to do this, for this lesson, we are going to use, we're not gonna sue, we're going to use the te form of verbs and the helping verb iru. Now, one of the things you may have remembered is that we only use iru for living things. Um, we're going to use this for everything. Don't worry about this. I, I, this is kind of why I like bunching these together. Instead of saying like te, then iru, um, I kind of just say like te iru. The reason why they do that is because the te form changes depending on the verb you have. Now, like I said, um, there are many ways to use this. There are many ways to use teiru in Japanese, such as, and for these, the first way is verbs that describe activities that last for some time. I don't like how they use this word. Uh, that lasts for some time. I would like to say that these are things that are currently happening. Things that are currently happening. And this is what in English we call this the present progressive. The second example, verbs that describe, and this is the thing, changes that are more or less instantaneous. And that's actually our second thing. We're going to talk about that later. And then our third one is verbs that describe continuous states. We're not going to get to part three today. That's going to be a later chapter. So our first focus will be on the present progressive. Um, for this, we're going to use these words. We're going to use these supplemental words for today's lesson. And this is what, what I said like about what I meant by earlier. I'm gonna use the grammar or the vocabulary that I had taught you guys before. Uh, da -da, one, two, do it this way. So here we'll put the, the word um, Romanji, and then the meaning. Uh, I have never seen you type and I am impressed by the speed and accuracy with which you type things. I am actually, I've been told that I do type pretty fast. Now uh, those are adjectives here. So we're gonna be using our new vocabulary words for today. We have mutau. Not a different font, some are just half and full. Hey, Kitsuneko-san, welcome in. I am, Kitsuneko-san, I, I, I am slightly delaying my stream so that we can easily move towards, um, like segue into your streams. Romanji. 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 I think it's I, I think it's better correct. Romanji. Uh, so we're gonna be using utau kaburu haku shiru sumu. I that's not that's not a mu. Sumu. Hataraku. Whoa, they use Hataraku in the new edition. Okay, fine, we'll use Hataraku too. Uh, but in that case, I'll add Stomeru. Because that's that's the one that they were using in this in the older one. Uh Futoru. And then um Let's see. Megane. Oh Kakeru. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Megan, I. Oh. Akeru. They used to start before 5 p.m. way back in the day. Oh. <laughs> uh, Kiru. 
And then, yes, seru. And then, ke, ke, on suru. Now, he, these are the supplemental words we're going to read. Romaji. We'll do that then. Romaji. It is Romaji. Alright, so for this, we have utau. And this means to sing. Taburu. This means to put on. Oh my god. And this is like a hat. A haku. This is to put on below waist. A shiru, which is to know. Sumu, to live. I'm gonna put this parentheses at, to live at. Hataraku, which means to work. Stomeru, I added sto ha stomeru, which means to work for. Um, because of this, work for, use particle ni. Uh, futoru, to gain weight. I spelled weight wrong, holy shit. After you complimented me of how quickly and accurately I could type uh, this <laughs> Megane o Takeru, which is to put on like glasses. Then Kiru, which is to put on above the waist. Then we have Yaseru, which is to lose weight. And then Ke Konsuru, which is to get married. And this is using particle toll, which means and. All right, so these are going to be our supplemental words for uh, the lesson for today. We're going to be using these grammar forms. Now, for a quick review, we need to know, remember that we need to use te form for these. Uh, and remember that te form depends on how these verbs end. Um, let's see, hold on. I'm gonna hide, uh, put these in like green because these are our oo verbs. These are our ru verbs. I'll put these in blue. And this is our irregular verb because it's sudo. We'll put this one in red. So these are the verbs. So because of um, te form, we have to pay attention to the ending. Like some of these end with ru, some of them end with ku, some of them end with mu, and so forth. So let's fo first focus on how to conjugate these into... Conjugate these verbs into... Teiru. Now, remember, we're using the helping verb iru. Now, iru, we, if you recall, iru is used for only living things. In this case, there is no, um, we're gonna use this for both living and non-living. We're not gonna say te aru. That, that, that's, we're, we're not gonna do that. So, um, as an example, let's, let's start with utao. Um, sudo verbs are not, because they're considered irregular. Mostly because suru will turn into shimas. There, it has its own different rule set. There are very, very few irregular verbs in Japanese. Um, so, for, before we go forward with this, let me let's let's go in and re review um, how to conjugate into te form, and you can find this review. If we go back to Japanese one resources and go to chapter six. And the biggest thing on chapter six was te form. So if we go through this and like, I still haven't heard this te form song from you guys, by the way. I just did my uh, baby shark stuff. Um, so for our, for ru verbs, these are the easiest ones. Ru verbs, we just replace that ru with te. So remember, ru with te, do 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 do, ru with te, do 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 do, ru with te, do 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 do, ru with te, so forth and so forth. I'm gonna get DMCA now. <laughs> All right, so like taberu to tabete, akeru to akete, kariru to karite, and with this we have megane o kakeru. So megane o kakete, but if we wanted to change it to teiru, it would be like. Hold on, I didn't want to do that. 
No, stop it, God, get some help. <laughs> so like, for example, The Tayform song is a command in your chat that links to the clip. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do that then. <laughs> uh, so let's do a, a, a little bit of practice before we, we go further on on how, how to use these. So one, let's use Megane o Kakeru. We'll turn into what? Megane o Kakeru. Because it's a ru verb, we're going to replace that final ru. And so we would get... Megane o what? Megane o kake. Remember, replace that final ru with what? Oh my neck. Yes, kakete. But since we're doing kakete, we're gonna add iru at the end. And I'll put that in bold. So, megane o kakete iru. And of course, we'll put that in uh, hiragana. So, megane o kakateiru. Right now, we're just focusing on how to do this. Um, we'll go over the meaning for this in a moment. Uh, number two, let's use, um, utau to sing. Utau. Utau to sing. Utau is not a ru verb. It ends, uh, in fact, we highlighted it, I highlighted it in green because it is an u verb. It ends with u. If we check our chapter six notes, and you guys are welcome to look back at the notes. Anything here, uh, 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 the font, u verbs. U verbs ending with u, su, and ru. Oh look, Jesse, you got it. Cool. I like how I, 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 it's fake ru. <laughs> uh, so it turns into te. We add the, the double consonant t with e, so te. Uh, if that's a rule, then what happens to utao? How do we, how do we make, what do we make it? Uta... Uta what? Uta what? Hi, so let's yo utatte. Utatte. Remember, we doubled that consonant. But because we're also learning te iru, utatte, we're going to add iru at the end. Utatte iru. So, Nihongo de utau. Uh, and then we'll do one more example. In fact, I want to use hataraku, which is our uh, hataraku, which means to work, not to work for, but it means to work. Um, so hataraku ends with ku. Um, if you are looking at chat and you see Jesse's um, ku, uh, it ends with ku. What do we change ku or replace ku with? And it's also here too. Ku with ite. Ku with ite. So hataraku will turn into what? Hatara what? And I actually kind of like how this sounds like. I, li I love the change to ku. Hatara. Hey, hatara teiru. So hatara tei. Hold on. Hatara. Hataraite. Hataraite. And then add iru. Hataraite iru. I don't want it bolded. Hataraite iru. Very good. So that's a review on how to conjugate into these. You're basically just adding iru at the end of your te form. And that's why we called it te form with e helping verb iru. Remember, we're not going to use aru. It's always going to be iru for these words, regardless if, if we're talking about a living or non-living thing. 
Now today's main focus will be talking about the present progressive. So here, present progressive. And basically that means verbs that are happening now or are going to happen for some time. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Oots. Um. Um. I, I'm like drawing a blank. I'm like, how does that song go? <laughs> I feel like I feel so bad because I know this song, but I can't. I, I can't like. I'm just like, how does it go? <laughs> <laughs> um, so present progressive means verbs that are happening right now. I, and, and I actually recently taught this in, to my English class. Uh, I, I was like telling my Spanish speakers, like, these verbs are happening like ahorita, like right at this instant. Um, who knows? In English, what do we add? What do we add? in English to our verbs to show the present progressive. Actually, here, let me put this in the new table so it's... It maybe makes more sense this. So in English, whenever we use the present progressive, we, we do this. And this will probably help you understand what this what this means. Yes, we need the verb plus ing. This is the present progressive. Basically things that are happening right now. So for example, I am teaching. I'm doing that right now. I'm using the verb teach with ing. This is the present progressive in, in, uh, that I'm talking about in Japanese. Using am is are plus the verb. Now, in Japanese, we're using the verb in te form, but we're also using a helping verb. The helping verb in Japanese is iru to show that this is happening right now. Now, th this doesn't connect, this is not a direct translation from how we do it in English or not, it's just a similar use. But remember, Teiru has three major uses. Uh, the first one we're talking about now is present progressive. The second one is about to describe changes, and the third to describe continuous states. We will not get to the third one this chapter. We may, I may have time to go over this second one today. I don't know if it's how much, how long that is. But basically, using Teiru, we are basically saying that things are happening right now. So let me go back to the exam examples that we did here. So for example, um, so let's use our practice verbs from above in the sentences. And the first one, um, let's say, Itsuneko-san wa megane o kakete mas. We're still conjugating these into um, kakete mas. Uh, in fact, let me add this here. After changing a verb into teiru form, it conjugates like a regular ru verb. And I'm going to highlight this because I, I, this is actually very important. I should have said this and I apologize. Uh, it conjugates like a regular ru verb. So this one, Kitsuneko-san wa megane o kakedeimasu. Kitsuneko... God damn it. San. Why? Why? Megane. Oh. Ka. Get. 
ています、えー。その文の意味は何ですか ?What does this mean? キツネコさんはメガダイをかけています。This is one that we're using in the present progressive. So, メガダイをかけています。Remember, メガダイをかけている。It means to what? To put on glasses. What would this sentence mean? And I'm going to give you a hint. It doesn't mean Kitsuneke san is putting on glasses. What does this mean? Remember, we're talking present progressive. It's currently what they are doing right now. Yes, that is correct. Kitsuneke san is where. In glasses. So basically, in the using this as a present progressive shows it's basically like adding the ing into our sentences in English. Kitsuneko is wearing glasses. We could say Kitsuneko san wears glasses, but that's that's like, yeah, we know. But if you say that they are wearing glasses, you know that right now, at this point, they're wearing glasses. Because, like, if you have glasses, you're not going to sleep with your glasses on. Some and some people don't eat with their glasses on. So, in this case, this is like how to differentiate between the two.、Uh, people don't? What do you mean? People don't sleep with their glasses on? <laughs> I know, like, when I use my blue light glasses, in fact, I'm gonna put mine on right now. If I'm going to eat in front of my computer, I take them off because if I'm eating, for example, ramen, it is almost too difficult to, to see because, like, they, they just fog up. So I take my glasses off then, kind of thing.、Uh, example two, we were using、um, Dao. So let's say. Jessie san wa. Hmm. Cruel Angel Thesis. <laughs> oh. Utat de mas. Sorry, I didn't mean to do it. Kanji. What does this mean? <laughs> Jesse san wa cruel angel thesis o utatte mas. Cruel angel thesis o utatte mas. And please tell me you know this song. <laughs> oh my god, k i s u n e k i s a n Sounds like things are getting steamy. <laughs> What is this Latin alphabet in Hiragana? <laughs> yes, Jesse is singing Cruel Angel Thesis. Jesse is singing. Oops. Jesse is singing Cruel Angel Thesis. <laughs> And then for number three, our last one, we use Hataraku for to work. And let's say,、um, Rick the Fayori, welcome in, konbanwa.、Uh, let's see. Let's say, um. Asanonic san wa. Atarai de masen. Um. Daigaku ga arimasu kara. In fact, actually, we learned the kanji for this already. Daigaku, we know the kanji for that. 
And this is a grammar point we learned last chapter. So. This got back from karate after a two-week break. Nice. Uh, is Kitsune Kosozu written hiragana or katakana? Um, because it's a name, I could what, what? I could put it in katakana. Uh, what would this one mean? Uh, I'm combining some grammar that we learned from before, too. I have trouble saying that. I had a bad knee and the doctor said, take two weeks off. Oof. Oof. I actually just started working out again today. I, since, since, um... It was distract- it's okay. <laughs> um, we're using hataraku, hataraiteiru, but I put it in the negative this time. So, hataraku means to work. So what would this sentence mean? Let's see. Asinonix is not working. Daigaku ga arimasu kara? Because they have university, so it, like if I were to do this literally, it's kind of weird. They have because they have college. Because they have college, so like putting these together like this is kind of weird. Asinonics is not working because they have college. Like if we were to actually translate this into English, we would normally say because Asinonic has college classes they are not working kind of like this uh having kara at the end is because um i'm gonna put this in italics because like we like if i directly translate this this is what it means but in this case it's kind of it translates better like this in english Because Asana has college, they are not working. And they were still using the present progressive for working kind of thing. Ashi no nixu? Ashi no nixu? Probably. I'm putting it in the Romanji because I'm a little lazy about it. <laughs> In which case, at this point, I want you guys to try some sentences on your own. And this may be a stretch. I want you guys to try to use... Here, so let's see. Practice. And share. If I could spell correctly. Practice and share. So for this part, guys. Um, no, I want it bolded. Create your own sentences. Share with chat. And as an example, so to get this started, um, I'm gonna put this in English. Please translate this into Japanese. Let's say, um, Zarak Crisis is eating sushi. Zarek Crisis is eating sushi. How would we say this in Japanese? Nihon, Zarek Crisis is eating sushi wa nihongo de nan desu ka? Present progressive. Deiru. Oskatte kudasai. Please use. Oh, I can use that word. We learned that scout to use. Um, Deiru oskatte kudasai. I'm so happy we're in Japanese too because I can use all these other verbs I've been wanting to use in the one. So Zarek Crisis is eating sushi wa. Hey, 
ゼロックさんは寿司を食べています。Cl- Jesse, close. 食べる is a rue verb. You're really close.、Uh, Jack 先生の従業を見ています。There, that's a good one. I, I'll put that as an example. So for this one, Jack. Sensei. And we learned the kanji for this, so I can use it. Jack Sensei no Jugyo.、Um, we have not learned the kanji to that one. Jugyo o m i t e m a s I am watching Jack, Jack Sensei's class. So, oh my gosh. Yamenasai! <laughs> Jack Sensei no Jugyo o m i t e m a s It's okay, Jesse.、Uh, let's see. The Rock Crisis. This is what sushi or tapetemas. Hi, tapetemas. Let's use the honorifics for everyone still. <laughs> the Rock Crisis on what sushi. And because I have, not ex- I have not taught the kanji for sushi yet, so I'm not going to use it. Sushi or tapetemas. Um, so we have one. We have, all right, so my example. <laughs> Jesse, I feel that pain. Hey, Jesse, you've actually gotten a lot better with it. <laughs> I think because I kept giving you a hard time with it, you, you started using it. <laughs>、um, how about this? Try to make one in the negative. Did I put te? Oh, I did. I did. There we go. Um, try to do one in the negative, guys. Try to do one in the negative.、Um, I'm gonna put these verbs here so that you can see our new ones. Try to use one of our new ones. We used utau, we used, um, hataraku. Um, you could try using kiru or haku, but put it in the negative. You could say, like, pantsu o haite masen. I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> Kind of thing. Okay.、Uh, I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. Try to create another sentence. One more sentence, but do it in the negative. Write it in the negative.、Uh, remember, when you conjugate into teiru, the f- verbs conjugate like a normal ru verb. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick, and hopefully you guys come in. Is that true?、Um, I'm neither going to confirm or deny those allegations. I plead the fifth. All right, be right back. I has returned. Did anyone come up with a sentence? Not yet. Jack s e n s e Jack, Jack the Tiger san wa. Yoku utatte masen. I don't sing that well. <laughs> I mean, that's very true. I, I, I'll take it. <laughs> I asked you to write something in the negative, and that's correct. <laughs> So, Jack the Tiger. Oh my gosh, why, why not? Why there? San. What? Yoku.、Uh, we haven't learned that kanji yet, so I'm not going to use it. Yoku utate masen.
Now, there's a difference between uh, this one. This one could mean, uh, this one means Jack the Tiger is not singing very well. Like, I'm currently singing right now. Like, uh, maybe I've had too much to drink and I'm actually doing karaoke for once. This is, this is what that would be like. It would be like, you would hear the chalk, the nails on the chalkboard kind of singing, kind of thing. <laughs> um, looking at the time, I do have time to do the second part. Um, any questions? Minasan, shitsumo ga arimasu kara? Drunk karaoke. Any questions on how to use the present progressive? In fact, I'm not. Let's. I'm not here. Let's organize this this way so that it's a little easier. Any questions on using Teiru for present progressive? And I guess the better question is, do you understand what I mean about the present progressive? Do you understand what the present progressive is? Uh, if you don't, I, I did put it here, like, verbs that are happening now are going to happen for some time. You could say, I am studying, like, Nihongo benkyo shitemasu, I am studying Japanese. Uh, atashi wa kouen ni boushi wa kabutte Um... Because you're at the park, I think uh, Cohen did bullshit. You're wearing a hat at the park. Probably uh, use particle de. Because you're wearing your hat at the park. Um, so this is Atashi wa Cohen. I, I uh, again because we haven't learned this. Hanji yet. I'm not going to use it. Uh, koende, boshi, oh, kabut, deimas. I am wearing a hat at in the park. Atashi wa koende, boshi o kabut deimas. I'm so used to saying kabut deiru. I'm, I, I like, I, I'm, I, I have a hard time conjugating this, and I think some of you may have noticed it. <laughs> All right, if there are no more questions on the present progressive, we're going to go to the second way that we're going to use teiru, which is verbs that describe changes that are more or less instantaneous. Things that, ha that if these have happened, um, it's a change that's ki to an extent permanent, I guess. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. Cause like, there are some that are very easy to understand, like, oh, that's what that means. Versus like, oh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's insert another table. We'll call this two. And these are this focus is changes that are more or less instantaneous. So basically, something has changed and it's ongoing or to an extent permanent. So basically, something has happened and is ongoing or permanent. Um, this may sound like a continuous state thing, specifically the permanent part, but there is a difference between the two. Did I get, yes, I did. Okay. So, I, I want to make it clear that this no longer means the present progressive. Um... Yeah, this at this point for this part two, it is no longer the present progressive. It means something entirely different. And 
and this is it's, it's this one that I have a hard time trying to explain a little bit because grammatically it's going to be using the same uh, the same uh, form. We're going to use teiru, but these changes these are things that have changed, or someone is like. I guess we do use continuous states a little bit. Well, we'll see. So, the easiest example I can give there are actually two that I can use. Um, as a review, what is the verb to die? <laughs> what is a verb to die? Most of you should know this one. What is the verb to die? Hmm. Hi, she knew. Uh, it ends with it ends with new. Uh, what is she new in uh, Tay form? She new in Tay form. Mm. Right, I need to double check the notes on this one too. So this will turn into Shinde. And of course, if we add the uh, Teiru, this becomes Shindeiru. Shindeiru. Now, this does not, when we use it in this case, it doesn't mean someone is dying. That would be present progressive. Someone is dying. Um, no. This, if we use teiru with shindeiru, it basically means something is happening, it's ongoing, it's permanent. What we mean when we say, like, neko ga shindeiru, we mean they're dead. We, we, it just literally means something is dead. So, in this example... Here, let me write the example. Neko, Neko ga shindeiru, or shindeimasu, shindeimasu. I could say wa, but I'm putting emphasis. Um, you could say that you're having difficulty at work, but you that that wouldn't translate correctly. Uh, Corona virus. I'm I, co, co ro nau iru. Co, corona iris? Who's that? <laughs> I'm having trouble. That's, that's actually why I use a, a romanji. Uh, and I'm having pro problem with the kanji too. Guy! <laughs> um, here, let me, let me try this. Oh, Corona. Oh, because it's the why vi virus. Corona virus. Wow. Yeah. Hold on, that's not what I want. That's not what I want either. Corona virus. Was Yeah, it happened? Kind of. Hasseishteimasu happened. Um, that ha that would probably go with this one. It, it's more or less still kind of going on. Uh, but like, and this kind of, I think that's similar to what I'm trying to uh, allude to here. This does not mean in this, hold on. In this example, we are not saying the cat is dying. We're saying it is dead and is in the continuous state of being dead. And this is a change that is ongoing. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not gonna let me remove continuous state. I don't I don't like that. And this is 
is that and this is a change that is ongoing and or permanent. There's no way that we can bring this cat back. Neko ga shindeimasu. The cat is dead. <laughs> Neko ga shindeimasu. This, like I said, this is a change that is ongoing and it, it's it's an ongoing thing. Like they're they're gonna be dead. It's kind of like how we if. Let me try this one. Let's see. Okiru. Why is it bolded? I do not want these bolded. Okiru. Uh, who remembers? What is Okiru? I don't think we learned the kanji to this one. What is Okiru? First of all, what does it mean? Okiru. This is one of, actually one of the first verbs we learned. Okiru. It means, yes, it means to wake up, to get up. Wake up or to get up. Um, but if we said, uh, this is a normal root verb. Okiru, okite, okiteimasu. Okiteiru. Or okiteimasu, okiteimasen. I prefer looking at the kanji. <laughs> See, it, it does get to the point where looking at the kanji is a lot more useful, but we, since we haven't learned how to write it yet, I'm not going to use it. Um, now, okiteiru doesn't mean someone is waking up. It means what? If we're using te form, this is not present progressive again. That something changed, but we're still using the verb. It means they're what? Not exactly that they've woken up. That would be okimashita. The person has woken up. You're, you you have similar like they've woken up. You could say like, um, if I said like chichi wa shichiji ni okimashita. My father woke up, has woken up at seven. But if I said, Chichi wa okiteimasu, this doesn't mean that they're waking up, it means they're awake. That's, that's basically what it means. They are awake. They woke up and they are, on, they're, they're still in the state of being awake, kind of thing. Chichi and Shichi, yes, <laughs> they do. Chichi wa. So in this case, like using teiru changes it to like they are awake. Chichi, chichi. And this is what I mean. Like these are changes. Like this change, this wake up change, shows that they are now something else. Um, our new word here, let's use this one, sumu. This means to live at. Uh, try doing this in, um, whatchamacallit, try, what is sumu in, um, teiru form? What would sumu be in teiru form? What would sumu be in te iru form? It ends with mu. Hi, sundeiru. Sundeiru. And that is correct. They are living at a place. This one's kind of similar. It, mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're alive, but they are living at a location. And that's why we use like, I would say like San Diego ni sundeimasu. I, I live in, I'm currently saying I live in San Diego. Or in fact, it's better, better to say they live at a location. They're not living, they live at a location. They reside in a location kind of thing. Um, new vocabulary word here too. Hold on, I don't want this highlighted. To live at a place or to live in a place. Um, in this case, I it depends. I think that uh, that at or in is um, it, it depends on semant semantics in English. I could say like I live in San Diego or like she lives. It's 
let's just say that they live at a location. Because <laughs> I think in may be better in that case as a particle. Uh, what about this verb? Tekonsuru. Tekonsuru. This is irregular, first of all. Um, what does it mean? Kekonsuru. It's one of our new ones. Kekonsuru. Chikyu ni sundeimasu. I live on Earth. In that case, it, it turned to on. I live in the planet Earth. I live on Earth. Kekonsuru. Uh, Kekonsuru. One of our new ones. Kekonsuru. It's one of the supplementary... Supplementary words that I use. Yes, to get married. Kekonsuru means to get married. It means to get married. And it will turn into Kekon shi mas Or teiru, depending on how you want to conjugate it. Uh, chichi wa shichichi ni. Chi. What? Izuni. Oh my god, I, I get cheese. That's so. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, Kekon Shiteru. Kekon Shiteru. This does not mean that. Uh, like, if you use Tater, it doesn't mean they're marrying someone, it means they are married. Married to blank. Or that they're currently married to someone. Uh, basically, after a wedding, you you would always use, you could say like, um, Haha wa chichi to kekon shitemasu. My father, my mother is married to my mother, kind of thing. My father put shichi mi on the map at 7 o'clock, what? <laughs> chichi wa shichiji ni shichi mi o... Cheese ni kakemashita. I know, she chiji. But like, this is what I mean, guys, about like how this is a change. This is these are changes that happen. Um, it. it I think it was a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, these are general examples. I do want to use that the one, oh, the example they use also, which was shiru. And this one means to know. Now the examples they would they said was like shteimas, and this is very this is very particular. Shteimas. This doesn't mean I am knowing of something. It says like I know, blank. You under you already know this. Like this lesson shteimas. I know this. But it's important to know that for the negative, like, I don't know, you would not use shteimasen. It would, it's just, for the negative, just use shirimasen. I don't know. Like, uh, if I were to say, like, do you know the answer to, uh, kotai o shteimasu ka? And be kai I know the answer. Uh, remember, this to know is different from wakaru, which means to understand. Is it wrong to use shiteimasen? Um... I think yes. Only because this is a, something that is ongoing or permanent. Uh, as soon as you say you don't know something, you're probably going to know. <laughs> um... And that's not an ongoing permanent thing, so it's more appropriate to use shiri masan because that it, it can it's it, it can still change. That that's my understanding of that, anyway. Unless conservatives, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's kind of like, um. Kekonchite masan. I'm not married to them. Let's see. We got to know Tokini. Zerokusan. What? Nakoni. 
Something changed? Oh my god, I need to practice my kanji. I feel so bad. Like, I know the grammar, but... Do conservatives learn Japanese? Well, conservative Japanese probably know Japanese. But that's a different type of conservative. Um, but yeah, this is what it means so that these changes are instantaneous. So I'm gonna give- let me- let's try some example sentences before we just- we start, uh, planning on rating out. So let's do practice. Um... Let's try this. DJ! Hey! DJ, it's a burb! I'm going to drink. <laughs> The entire country of Japan exists in Japanese class. <laughs> there are conservatives in every country. And yes, as far as I know, um, Japan is a pretty conservative country and it still is kind of reflected uh, in today's society. Japan's very, very... Although Japan is very accepting of new ideas, in practice, they're, they're still pretty hard set in their ways. They're very conservative about it. And if they did, like, they're open to new ideas, but they will change those ideas so that it can be accepted in the Japanese kind of way. It's the way uh, I've been taught. And not gonna lie, sometimes it's for the better. Like, when Japan took Transformers, they, tur they changed Transformers to be more Japanese, and it was much better in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, anyway, practice, and we're still working on these. Um, let's say, um, the man is heavy set or fat. How would we say this? And this is using one of our new words. The man is heavy set or fat. We learned man this chapter. In fact, we know the kanji to say man. Uh, for this one... To gain weight, futoru. To gain weight is futoru, futorimas, futorimasen. But to be on the heavy side, you would have to be, you would have to use the, um, teiru form of it. Try to make this sentence. The man is on the heavy, the man is heavy set, or the man is on the heavy side. Or as the kids will say it, how the kids say it these days. The man is chonky. <laughs> I literally thought you were gonna write starting with the man in the mirror for some reason. No. <laughs> like, how would we say this in Japanese using that new verb? Uh, and I'll put it here for you. Futoru. Uh, try to type this or write this in chat. The man is heavy set. The man is fat. Otoko wa futote mas. Hi, yes. Uh, be, be more specific with this one. Um, otoko no hito. In fact, we know, we know the kanji for these. Otoko, we learned that. We actually learned this last chapter. No hito. Wa futote mas. I spelled it wrong. Futoru, futori, futote, futote mas. There we go. So, otoko no hito wa. That is correct. Otoko no hito wa futote mas. Otoko no hito no. Otoko no hito wa futote mas. And then futoru, uh, remember, it means to gain weight, but when we use teiru, it means that there's a change. I wonder what other examples are. I'm actually glad that we were able to get to both parts of this lesson. I was I was thinking it would take longer, but this is this is actually good. Um, next example. The woman is not on the thin side. Um, to be thin is what? It's it's also... Oh no, it's a rue verb. Yaseru, to lose weight. Yaseru. 
So for this one, we're going to be using Yasuru. How would we say this in Japanese? The woman is not on the thin side. Saying negatives in Spanish is so much easier. You just put no in front of it. Yasute masen. That is correct. You don't do, do the whole sentence though. Yasute masen. Onna no hito wa yasute masen. That is correct. Yasute masen. Oh. Onna no hito wa yasute masen. Whereas in Japanese, like in order to do negatives, you have to negate the verb itself. Like it's like Spanish, just add no. In English, you can use you can use not, un, dis, im. There's so many ways to say put something in the negative in English. It's actually it's actually kind of crappy. <laughs> And that's what makes English very difficult. <laughs> um, let's see. DJ is married to Darkstar. There we go, let's try this. Um, You have to use particle toe with this one. I want to see if you guys can make this. DJ is married to Darkstar. <laughs> this happened in one of my games that we were playing. <laughs> DJ, oh my god. <laughs> DJ is married to Darkstar. Darkstar. <laughs> hey, I think Jesse and my character got married at one point. In, in, in um, Wildermyth. DJ wa Darkstar. Uh, to marry. Um, it's here again. Remember, to get married. Kekkon suru. Kekkon suru. Don't forget your honorifics. Then you killed me and it went well. <laughs> so DJ... DJ San Wa Dark Star San To. That is correct. We need particle To here. Dark Star San To. Kekkon shite mas. There we go. Kekkon shite mas. Kekkon shite mas. You say DJ is married to Dark Star. Dark Star San. Dark Star San. <laughs> They're like, how do you know this? <laughs> and then we'll do one last one before we raid out. Um, let's see. I actually feel like I'm in school again and I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> Honestly, if I could go back to college, I think I would. I, I, I actually think if I could go back to college, I would. Um, let's say, um, let's say, DJ, oh, I'm gonna use DJ again. DJ is working for, let's say Target, I like Target. Um, be careful that we have two verbs that mean to work. Uh, to work for, using particle ni, we have to use stomeru. Stomeru. Welcome to Japanese Stockholm class. That is horrible. <laughs> Stomeru and use particle ni. The so DJ is working for Target. Mukashi mukashi nihon de sundemashita. Tekkon shimashita. Oh, benkyo shimashita. Sorry, benkyo. I was like, I was about to say, you got married in Japan? <laughs> Uh, daigaku no toki mo. It was like, you studied, you, you lived in Japan and you studied there also. Stomeru. Let's find out. Let's see. Stomeru. Is it a, uh, a ru verbs are here. So, nope. Stomeru is an u verb. Stomeru is Stomeru. Yes. Stomeru is a u verb. That is correct. DJ, uh, don't forget honorifics. DJ Sanwa. 
Oh, it is a Ruverb. <gasps> I've been corrected. Okay, I'll fix it. <laughs> um, you guys heard nothing. Okay. <laughs> there we go. DJ san wa target ni. So met demas. We don't know the kanji yet. There we go. I'm so I'm so used to putting so potato. <laughs> I'm so used to using short form at this point. So DJ san wa target to ni sto metemas. Hi. The Jack Sensei got corrected. Hey, Ningen Deskara, I am human. <laughs> I actually think that's one of the reasons why my students actually like me, because they ha they have a math teacher who's like, even when she was wrong, she's like, I'm not wrong, I'm right, I'm right. But then there's me, it's like, oh, I made a mistake, that's all right, let's fix it. And the kids are like, we can relate to you because you're not like a robot kind of thing. I'm like, okay, that's that's cool. So, that um, any questions on part two, which was um, changes that are more or less instantaneous. Um, this is actually a bad example for here. I'm going to cut this, actually. I'm going to cut that because this is a better example for here. For number for as a, like a number eight. Only because this is DJ is working at Target or working for Target. Which is like I'm using the ing there. I have respect for Jack now, being humble for his students. I I like. Who has seen Utena, by the way? Like uh, revolutionary girl Utena. Who who has seen and know and knows of it? Because like, you may have respect for me, but my kid my kids respected me, but I also pulled so many pranks on my kids that they got angry at me. <laughs> Yeah, they were amazing pranks. Like one, one, one day, it's like, if you listen to this music right now, this is like, this is lo-fi girl, comfy, lo-fi, everyone's calm, gentle. And then I'm like, okay guys, I know you're nervous and I know you have a test today. So I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to cram, even though you should have studied before. And I will play some comforting music as you're playing. And they're like, okay, Sensei, that's so nice. And the first thing I'll play is Zetai Unme Moku Shiro And the kids are like, what the hell? I'm more stressed now. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'll change it to something else. And then I would play the, like, I'd play the uh, Breath of the Wild um, um, Guardian song. And they're like, this is even worse. <laughs> that was me. That was, that, I was that teacher <laughs> also. They hated it, but they still liked it. <laughs> they still liked it. I actually, um, most of my, I remember, like, I told my kids, like, during lunch, uh, during lunchtime, I would uh, wa uh, have them see uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena. And most of the kids were like, wow, this is old. The animation's ugly. This is what my mother would watch. I don't want to watch this. But the more they got into it, the more they were like, holy shit, this is a really good anime. And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> In fact, I told the kids for extra credit because uh, Utena's a very good coming of age story. It's also a very good feminist story. Uh, if they wanted to write a report on it, I could grade it and have it be used as extra credit for not for my Japanese class, but for English, because they were reading coming of ages stories for them too, and they were, they they all were like, "This is a great idea," but none of them actually did it because I wanted I actually wanted a report. <laughs> yeah, old does not equal bad. Let's see. Imagine taking a test and you just hear the Guardian theme from Breath of the Wild. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I attend my first Japanese lesson with Jack and I thoroughly love it. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for coming in. This is going to end today's lesson. Uh, the next Japanese lesson will be on Wednesday, unless I decide to cook more curry. I'm joking, but I'm, gonna, I'm trying to make a point of at getting at, making at least two lessons a week. Um, our next lesson may include many grammar points. Um, for those of you that are in the Discord, I'm gonna be putting practice problems um, in there. Uh, if you check before, uh, here, let me do this real quick. 
if you go to no discord why here we go if you go into the japanese to practice here uh last time i said for practice review these kanji these are the new kanji for this chapter um you didn't have to type it here you put these in your notes i will be putting pr questions for the present progressive and the changes for teiru for you to answer here my only request is that when you type your answer um don't forget to do the um these double straight lines to hide your answers by using twice like this so that no one else can see your answer kind of thing uh, so I'll be trying to do this. Something new. I am going to try to do... Um, I don't really have speaking things, but I, I'm going to try to tr have some listening practice in here later on as well and see how you guys do for that. Um, I will put these up here later, either tonight or tomorrow. Um, next lesson, we're going to be using... Um... Hmm... Oh dear God, we have to use Tayform for adjectives. <laughs> We're going to learn um, how to describe physical characteristics in people as well as t adjectives in Tayform. That, that will be the goal for next lesson. I will try to remember this. Um, for now, um, we're all going to now... Yes, uh, in fact, that's what I said. Like I was telling for Japanese one, Tay form is literally make or break for Japanese. You have to learn and you have to memorize Tay form because if you don't, it will hurt you so much later on. Um, there we go. It will, it will, it literally hurts you later on to not know Tay form because you must know it for literally everything we're going to do for the rest of our, your Japanese careers. All right, so we're going to, um, hmm. Our raid me here's our raid message for tonight. Um, This will be our raid message. Use whatever uh, heart emotes you have. We are going to be raiding out to Kitsuneko-san as they, as she does her next lesson. Uh, the raid message is Nihongo o benkyo shitemasu, which means we are, what does this mean? Nihongo o benkyo shitemasu. In fact, you shouldn't, uh, this is something that we've learned. Nihongo o benkyo shitemasu. We are what? We are what? Nihongo o benkyo shitemasu. Uh, benkyo shite, benkyo suru. Benkyo suru. We are studying Japanese. Yes, that is correct. So, benkyo shitemasu, we put, we turn it into the present progressive. We are studying Japanese. So that will be our raid message for tonight. Thank you guys for coming in. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Uh, remember, the next Japanese lesson will be on Wednesday at 5, between 5 to 5.30 p.m. Pacific. See you guys later.